Uh, thank you. Um, okay, so this is a talk which Rowan Sutton advertised the other day. So uh, he promised that I'll show you that the North Atlantic's about to return to the 1960s. I'm not sure I can uh, quite promise that, but uh, the North Atlantic's been doing some pretty interesting things recently. Uh, and I'm just going to take you through some of that now and some of the evidence. So this is work I've been doing uh, with Pablo Ortega and, uh, and Rowan Sutton at Reading. Uh, so thanks to Gokan and Tom, especially for their, their good introductory talks earlier, so I can, I can launch straight into this kind of discussion of what AMV is and why we care about what's going on. So, and it comes down to the fact that we know that there's been lots of multi-decadal variability in the North Atlantic, uh, which is different to what's been going on in the, in the rest of the world's oceans, uh, which this plot up here shows. Uh, so the red line is North Atlantic SST, and the blue line is uh, everywhere else in the globe, essentially. Uh, and this has been linked to lots of important climate impacts that we heard earlier. But we're still not really sure what's been driving it. Of course, there's lots of evidence that the AMOC and ocean circulation is important. There's lots of evidence that aerosols are important, changes in surface fluxes, etc. cetera. Um, however, what, what Rowan did show is that we, we actually think we're getting quite confident we can predict certain aspects of this AMV. So in particular, the, ocean, the large ocean heat content changes in the subpolar gyre are, are quite predictable. So this is a plot from one of my studies, uh, which just shows that black is the observations. There's this large warming in the mid-90s, which is associated with this, this shift in the AMV, SST. Uh, and this red line is an initialized prediction uh, made with the UK Met Office model. And so it's quite, it captures it quite well, and we see this in lots of other models as well. So, so we have some confidence that we can predict these changes due to ocean circulation changes. And now... Quite a few studies in the last couple of years have started to come out saying that we should be expecting a cooling, so a flip in sign from this AMV maybe even perhaps to a cold state. So the key question is, is if this will happen uh, and, and also when we might enter a cold phase. So we're going to start this story uh, in looking at this switch to the warm phase of AMV uh, from the mid-1990s into the early 2000s. This plot here shows on the left uh, it's just a linear trend in uh, SST data in the middle. It's the top 700 meters of ocean heat content. And on the right, it's ocean salinity, again, averaged over the top 700 meters. Uh, and where it's stippling, the linear trend is significant, essentially. So we know that this North Atlantic warmed substantially in the mid-1990s. The heat content change was really focused in this subpolar gyre region uh, that you can see here. So it's, it's really up here where you saw this really large change in ocean heat content. You also see SST changes across the, the rest of the basin, and you also see this increase in salinity. So if we look at what was happening in the atmosphere at the time, uh, so there was this trend to, uh, to negative NAO, which uh, Tom was talking about. Uh, so here, so we see that, uh, a slackening of the winds across the North Atlantic. This is all annual means, by the way. Um, and this is associated with uh, a drop in the surface heat fluxes. So red is a warming of the ocean here. Uh, and, and this is reduced wind stress curl, so less Ekman upwelling, so less cooling due to Ekman upwelling. So this did contribute to the warming of the North Atlantic at the time, but you can't, you can't explain the size of the heat content changes with, if, with the surface flux changes. Uh, and, so, and lots of evidence points to the fact that you needed this ocean circulation changes in, in reaction to this positive NAO trend in before. And so um, we and, uh, and the NCAR group especially have, have written quite a lot about this. So if we turn now to what's been happening over the last decade, so it's 2005 to 2014, then you see this, this pattern uh, reverses. You have this cooling of the SST uh, up here in, uh, focused on the subpolar gyre. And you see this cooling in ocean heat content and again in the salinity, a freshening in the salinity. So there's been, big, been a big change in the trends in the North Atlantic. And again, if we look at the, the surface, what's been going on in the atmosphere, then the, the atmospheric trends are quite different. So actually, you see this kind, of, this kind of slightly odd pattern, but this is kind of a strengthening of the winds across the Labrador Sea here, which is associated with an increase in the cooling of the ocean in the surface heat fluxes, and an increase in, in wind stress curl, especially over the eastern uh, subpolar gyre, so increased Ekman upwelling. Uh, but again, and I'm not going to show you the heat budget, but you can do a heat budget. Um, this, the size of these surface heat fluxes can't, they contribute, but they cannot explain this change in the heat content. And also the spatial pattern's not the same. 
So this really suggests that it's not just some contemporaneous uh, forcing of the, by the atmosphere of the ocean, but you need some sort of change in the ocean circulation. Now, of course, over the last few years, although we had this trend kind of to negative over NAO, over the last few years we've had these quite large positive NAO-like events. So is, is this just some sort of interannual variability? It's quite sensitive to these years. So if we just do something quite simple, we take out the last... Uh, well, the winter 2013 to 2014, which was quite extreme in the surface heat loss of the North Atlantic, then what you find is, is that many of these trends are quite sensitive to this winter, so especially SST, sea level pressure, wind stress curl, and surface heat flux. So if I just flick back and forth, does this work? Okay, so that's the full 10-year trend, and then this is the 9-year trend. You can see that the, that the SST in particular is quite sensitive. But what's not sensitive is this change in the ocean heat content and the change in the, in the salinity. So uh, they're not sensitive really at all. So this, this, is conf this does bring confidence. This is some kind of longer decade or time scale change which is going on in the North Atlantic at the moment. So what is going on? Well, so we know there's been some ocean circulation changes in the North Atlantic. So the top plot here is a plot from the rapid science team. So this is from the observations, the only continuous observations of AMOC uh, Trans Basin, uh, which is at 26 North. Uh, and this showed over, since 2004 this declining trend uh, in, the, in, the, in the AMOC, in the North Transport of the ocean. And so... One of the things is, the question is, is this just wind force? Is it just random, or is it some part of some longer-term trend? And we wrote this paper last year, which uh, basically looks in the models. So Gokan talked about this. One of the key predictors of AMOC in the models is this density in the Labrador Sea. So this shows, on the left, uh, density normally is averaged uh, between 1,000 and 2,500 meters, uh, preceding a minimum in the AMOC. So it's a negative negative density anomalies precede a minimum in the, in the AMOC. Uh, and you see that this Labrador Sea really sticks out, basically. And if you take an average over this region in the observations, what you find is you see a peak in the density here in the mid-1990s, which is associated with this trend to positive NAO, which peaked in the mid-1990s, increased surface heat fluxes, more dense water formation. But since then, this density index has really dropped off. So to the extent that if you believe these observations, it's now at its, at, at its weakest point. So this would really suggest that there is kind of a large-scale weakening of this kind of thermohaline circulation in the North Atlantic. So if we now kind of try and build on this and plot these two things together, so the red line now on this plot is this density index in this deep Labrador Sea region. The black line is uh, temperatures in this northeast Atlantic region, so the region which is cooling, basically, and the, and the blue line is the salinity times by 10, uh, just so to overlay. And so what you see is after this peak in the density in the mid-1990s, you see this warming of this region uh, to its warmest ever, ever levels observed. Uh, and then if this model relationship is true, as, as we suggested, then we should get this cooling. And so this is what you see. So after 2005, you see this cooling. It's pretty large. Uh, in this area of the ocean, so it's so the this this northeast Atlantic region is actually cooled down to kind of conditions that we last saw in the early 1990s, i.e., just before the la the shift to this positive A and B. Uh, it's about a cooling of a, of almost half a degree C on average, and about 1.5 times 10 to 22 joules. Uh, and that, as it says at the bottom, that's equivalent to a surface flux economy of about minus. 4.5 watts per meter squared over a decade, or 0 0.05 petawatts. And that 0 0.05 petawatts is about half of the deficit that we're seeing at 26 north, just for context. So it seems consistent anyway with this kind of idea of this thermohaline circulation forcing weakening, but is it similar to what we'd expect from the models? So we've also looked in the model, so Pablo's done this analysis. Uh, this is basically a composite analysis in the latest uh, Hadley Center model, HM3 GC2. Uh, it's a high-resolution coupled climate model. Uh, we've got 300 or so years uh, of this. And basically, he's picked out the nine largest 15-year trends uh, or declines in the, in the Labrador Sea and then composited a lagged, the lagged trends onto that so that we lag the trends by five years in the model. And so what we see after you get... Uh, uh, a reduction of density in the Labrador Sea is a cooling in SST on the left, a decrease in heat content 
in the middle and this freshening on the right, and particularly in this eastern subpelagia. And so if you correlate this across all, all of the time scales in the model, it's, it's a correlation of about 0.5 between the Labrador Sea Density Index and this eastern subpelagia region. Uh, so again, there, yeah, so this is consistent with the weakened heat and salt transport in the model. Surface fluxes do play a role again in the model, uh, but you, can't, you cannot explain this, this cooling that we see in the model, uh, just like in observations. So this is my last slide before a summary, actually. So what, so what are the implications? Well, so one of the things is, is that this density in trend in a deep Labrador sea is still negative. So if, if, this, if this model relationship is true between the ocean circulation and the, and the ocean circulation and heat content is, is real, then we'd expect this area of the ocean and the North Atlantic to cool, to cool further. If it does, we might expect to see a, a return to anomalous cold SSTs over the next decade, but, but that's where the question mark lies, and so we'll, we'll be watching this space. But of course, if this does, given the, big, the important climate impacts across a whole range of variables, then, then of course this could have quite large impacts on the surrounding region. So that was my quick tour of what's been going on in the North Atlantic over the last 10 or so years, or well, or longer. So the North Atlantic has, did warm significantly in the mid-1990s, and that followed this peak in this deep Labrador Sea Index, so it's consistent with a spin-up of the ocean circulation pumping more heat into the North Atlantic. But, that, but the North Atlantic heat content really peaked in 2005, and since then there's been quite a considerable warming in, in, in quite a large area of the North Atlantic uh, to again, to kind of to heat, content, heat content levels that we last saw in the early 1990s. So this cooling is not simply explained by changes in the atmosphere, contemporaneous, contemporaneous changes in the atmosphere, and it's consistent with what we'd expect, at least, from a reduction in the ocean circulation due to the deep Labrador sea density, but that's where the big question lies. We're not really sure exactly from the observations what, exactly what the changes in the ocean circulation are overturning compared to gyre, et cetera. So that's one of the big questions. And then finally, this density trend has continued to decline, uh, so we should expect further cooling over the next 10 or so years. So that's it. Thank you.